the hardest decision I ever made around my career was resigning um, before we moved here. Uh, when you are moving because it's your husband's job moving you, ooh, those claws come out. Um, I am Carly and I am first-generation American so my parents came here in 1974 settled up among family and raised their kids as tight-knit as possible um, first college graduate in my family first person to move away from family so I am a trailblazer uh, I guess in short okay, so my career has been um, an evolution of woman. Um, when we come up in our careers, we are told about the glass ceiling, you know? And I tried really hard to establish a career before starting my family, and I did as a pharmaceutical rep. And after I moved here, no one would take me. I had stayed home for five years and no one would take me back. And I just, um, I evolved and what I became is so much better than I ever imagined. So I am a small business owner. I do marketing um, for an orthopedic group in South Lake. And I've also hired some other moms like me who couldn't get back into the corporate world because of their family obligations. And now we all do outside marketing for them. Um, everybody gets paid, everybody's happy, and everybody can put their kids to bed at night. So managed to find a little bit of balance and share it. Am I gonna be rich with this? No, not in a million years, but it's certainly rewarding. Yeah. So I listened to a lot of Brene Brown and I have been trying to get better about naming my feelings. If I were to go back and name how I felt after those interviews that I'd walk out and I'd say, oh, I nailed it. I totally got that job. And getting the call, we went with someone else. We went with someone with more current experience. First it was anger. Um, and then it was shame. It, there was a lot of shame because I knew that I I knew in my heart that staying home was going to change my life. And a lot of other women just said, you know, stay home, you never get this time back with the kids. You have to stay home. And a lot of career women said, don't you stay home. Don't you stay home. And I learned it wasn't a glass ceiling. It was somebody holding me down. And sometimes it was other women who didn't believe that we could juggle it all. And I think we've come a long way from seven years ago, but um, we've got a lot of work to do. We've got a lot of work to do. But I guess in answer to your question, anger and shame. Um, yeah. Psychiatrist, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, I think honestly that that is where for me faith came in. And that's why it is important for me to share my faith with my kids. It doesn't matter who your God is. I think as long as we have faith that, that someone else is, is helping to guide us, then we know not, not to want too much of something. You know, I wanted that pharma job. I wanted it so bad. But God had other plans for me. And he took me and I kept getting rejected. And he shifted me. And here I am. Um, I got through it with prayer. I cried a lot because shame is hard for a perfectionist. Perfection is the opposite of shame. Um, and I, I resented a lot and I thought about writing about it. I thought about calling the newspapers and the magazines and telling my story. There is a glass ceiling. Don't stay home with your kids. Um, but then I met Parent who hired me and 
it's been the best thing I've ever done. It's the best thing God has ever done. I think that the hardest way to find where we fit in, the toughest time to find where we fit in is when we don't know ourselves. And I think that if we are stuck in that um, place of shame and, and wanting something so bad that that can't be ours and it's not happening and we tend to cower, you know, we put our heads down and, and feel unworthy. I think that is a great time if you'll do nothing else to just sit still and get to know you. Who are you? What drives you? And find yourself again. It's not the end. Nothing is the end, right? Nothing's finite, but it feels finite. So just know that you will wake up tomorrow and, and it's okay to be still for a little bit. It's okay to sit in it. The hardest decision I ever made around my career was resigning um, before we moved here. Uh, when you are moving because it's your husband's job moving you, ooh, those claws come out. And I had worked so hard uh, to get where I was um, and I felt so successful and I had to shift. I had to resign. Um, my family got involved. They told me it was the right thing to do to move to Texas where I'd never stepped a toe in Texas from New York City. Never ever seen the house I moved into. But I cried, I sobbed, I resisted, I fought it. And I stayed home those five years with those kiddos. That was the hardest decision of my career. And it has worked out miraculously because I think that if I didn't take the time, if I hadn't taken the time to get to know myself, I could have been catastrophic for someone who's a per perfectionist. It could have been catastrophic. So I'm very grateful that my parents said, go, go, we'll be okay without you. And it was my first time without them and they're fine and I'm fine and we've all grown. success for me did not come from inheritance. Um, it did not come from necessarily role models that, that went to an office building every day with a suit and tie on. So I think the critical success factors for me have been in my adult life, learning when to not speak. Very difficult, very difficult lesson. Um, I always have something to say. So learning when to not speak, learning to be consistent. Um, I think that I may have ADD and I've read that we tend to do the hard parts of the job first and then not finish the other stuff because it's easy and you can do it in 30 seconds. Well, I, <clears throat> I need to be consistent and I need to follow through. So I've learned that that's a critical success factor for me and being honest. Nobody likes a liar and nobody trusts a liar. And I have been able to build some really strong relationships because of my honesty and transparency. People know that what they see when they see Carly, what they see is what they get. What I say is what I mean. I mean what I say. Um, and I'm gonna be vulnerable. I'm, I might cry, but it doesn't mean I'm crazy. You know, it just means I'm honest. vulnerability because success with success comes power um, notoriety um, money usually accolades and I my love language is words of affirmation so I um I love the accolades 
that failure has taught me to admit um, where I could have done better, self-reflection, um, and, and a lot of perfectionists are not good, but self I think as humans, we're just not that great with self-reflection, right? We'd be better at showing other people how they can be better, giving other people reviews, but self-assessment um, has come from failure. Um, did I answer that? There's that ADD. <laughs> I read. Um, I feel that I'm I'm not I'm not done learning, uh, and I hope that I can always keep that sense of humility at the top of the list of, of things that I am. Right of things of traits that encompass who Carly is or describe who Carly is. I need to be humble, and I need to keep learning from people like. I know she's not that popular, but I love Oprah. I do. I think she's cool. Luckily, I haven't had to work with her, but I think she's awesome and she's she has evolved, you know? That is one woman that started at the bottom and now she's here. So I don't care about the haters. I love that woman. I learned from her. Brene Brown, she's amazing. She's smart. She's a researcher, but she's also down to earth and in touch and, and talks speaks to people the way that they can understand it. Um, I read, I listen to Oprah, I listen to Brene Brown. I think they're both extraordinary women that are great examples for us. And um, I lean in, I lean in to other people who are positive. You know, when you're around those energy suckers, when you walk away and you're empty, I really try to build my circle with positive people and I, Try to pour in positivity to people and I let them be themselves, their, their dirty selves. Like, just be you. And let's let's make a change. Let's make things positive. Let's move forward and make things better than how we found them. Okay, so um, if you haven't caught it yet, I am a huge fan of Brene Brown. I've read all of her books twice over. Um, so I listen to a lot of Brene. Uh, believe it or not, I, I watch a lot of hospital shows because it helps me disconnect and realize that sometimes if there's something too heavy on my heart and too it weighing too heavily on my mind, I'm like, hospital show, let's do it. Um, I, think, I think podcasts are great. I think reading is great. I think spending time with children is important. I try to volunteer reading to kids. Um, there are schools in our in my very own district. I'm in um, Keller ISD, and that don't have parents that can volunteer time. And when you read to small children and you see the way that their eyes light up and they perk up and they ask questions, suddenly you're their hero. So when I can't figure out what to do, I read to my family. I read to kids, um, and that really does motivate me and it helps me stay on track. Uh, I admit that I run into those moments. I think we all do. And I am very in touch with my feeling. I'm a feely touchy girl. So I give myself permission to feel it. I fall below the line. Uh, I don't know if you've ever read The Oz Principle, but when you're above the line, you're, you're seeing it, solving it, owning it, doing it, whatever it is. But when you fall below the line, you complain about it, you kick and scream about it, um, you cry about it, you whine about it. I let myself sit there for a little bit. I think it's healthy to get it out. I can't be pent up. I'm an angry girl when I have my feelings on the inside. And my kids have gotten to know that. So I let myself sit in it and then I pick myself up by going around people that are positive. I think, I think positivity is contagious. I think motivation is contagious and I really feed off of other people. So when I'm really down, because my friends, the people around me, I mean, anyone who's around me is gonna know how I'm feeling. When I'm down below that line, I reach out, I lean in and I say I need help. Um, and we have got to get better about saying we need help. 
that was hard for me. I wanted to do it all by myself, perfect. But I need help. Oh my gosh. I think that what I am most proud of is not giving up the dream that my grandparents came here with. So I don't know that I had a very clear picture of what that dream was, but I know that they gave it all up to come here for me. Um, and then my parents didn't speak a lick of English and they gave it all up for me. And I could have quit, you know, I could have taken a different road, a different path, but what I am most proud of is staying on track and hopefully raising up my little arrows to also stay on track because we've got to build a legacy. Um, and we're fighters, we fight adversity, we, we fight back. Otherwise we would be living in a tin home on the coast of some developing nation. We are fighters and they haven't seen the last of us. So I am most proud of staying on track, making them proud. Um, in closing, I would say that if I could give women around me, women and men around me, any advice, it's um, to stay vulnerable, to know when to ask for help, and uh, to stay honest. Because when we start lying on the outside, those lies creep in and we start lying on the inside. And it's very hard to convince ourselves um, back to health. So in order to stay healthy, I think, you know, if you can't help yourself, help someone else. And that, that'll lift you up. Um, if, you, if you don't feel that you can be honest with your boss or your family, find a stranger and tell them the truth um, and, and keep going. Don't stop. Don't let anybody get in your way.